can you explain your roles and responsibilities in your last project uh, so in my last project you know, basically uh, mostly uh, like uh, i'll be coding like i am a, a big java developer like i code i pick up a user story code unit test it check in the code and i do peer reviews of peer reviewing of the other uh, of my colleagues code uh, and i'll be conducting the interviews and i'll be attending all the user stories uh, like all the agile calls like summaries we have so there in the pa calls we discuss about like uh, about the new features and we'll be uh, talking about the impact of this new feature by analyzing the code the existing code so this is the basic roles and responsibilities like if at all any one new joiners are joining in the team then i'll provide them with the kts of the application Okay. You have any microservices experience? Uh yes, like we follow microservice architecture. Mm-hmm. How many years of experience you have? Uh like uh f- four years, four plus years I can say. Oh, you have four plus years of experience in microservices. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you explain your architecture, uh, microservice architecture, uh, in the last project? Uh, so, uh, like our application is basically a uh, used by internal people in Cigna. So there, what happens is like uh, they keep updating the custom. Uh, what I can say, uh, like in simple words, I can say patients, patients, uh, health health details will be getting updated. So they perform few operations on the UI. like they keep updating or keep adding something or deleting something based on the uh, input they receive from the client like you basically can directly go to the technical architecture how uh, you are maintaining your microservices how they are connected together ah uh, yeah so uh, what i can say like uh, we uh, for any operation we basically make a rest call so depending on the input that will be validated and processed so if at all there is a uh, communication between different apis then we make use of rest template and we are communicating with different apis as well mm, what more so what else i can select uh, like basically this how uh, like, how many microservices you have in your project uh, like uh, we have uh, uh, uh i i want to like completely microservice architecture we have followed we have uh, what i can say like uh, we have uh, uh clubbed into modules like module wise we have developed like we will be having rest calls like but that that will be under one project that will be generated as an er and that will be deployed so like that we are having different modules like different ers will be deployed for one application okay Do you have experience in any cloud platforms? Oh no, I don't have experience on that. You have any experience in Kafka? Oh, yeah, Kafka I know. You know or you have? Like I know like how to produce and consume the messages like but uh, overall maintaining the Kafka servers and zookeepers so that I, I don't have experience. Okay, you have uh, good knowledge on Kafka. Hmm. Okay. So um, obviously you have used Spring Boot for these modules, right? Yes. Okay. Can you explain me what are the features uh, or benefits we have will get from Spring Boot? So basically, Spring Boot comes up with a production ready. Uh, like we can build the production ready code very easily. Like it will. Uh, what can i say like it will help developers in setting up the project very easily you know basically if we are having few dependencies like spring boot starter parent so it will uh, it has that uh, capability that it will download few jobs on its own which are helpful in de- uh, developing the application like if we have a web uh, like if you want to develop a web application then we need to have spring boot starter web uh, dependency in the project so it will uh, download all the request stuff like we have we will get the tomcat servers uh, what i can send more like whatever uh, jars or third party applications or uh, third party jars we need it will download for us instead of we manually hard coding the dependencies again okay any other benefits 
uh any other like uh, we if we are having like uh, actuate uh, actuator uh, dependency then uh monitoring the monitoring of application is very easy here when when it is a spring boot application it gives few metrics metrics in the production also as well like which uh, services is up or down like how much uh, amount a service is taking up what is and we can have a swagger integrated to it easily which represent the pictorial representation of our applic- or aps like what it takes what it produces and what is consumes you are using uh, actuator in your project uh we don't use actuator in our project okay. but i know that okay so coming to uh, java how would you rate yourself uh, out of 5 out of 5 yeah uh, i would go between 3.5 to 4 okay which version of java you have used uh, i currently working on it Okay, how much experience you have in it? Uh, two places. Like, last project only I started working on it. Okay, so you have good hands-on experience mm. on Java 8, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will give you one scenario. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I have a list of employees. Okay. That is my input. Uh, employees having uh, name field, designation field. These fields are there. Okay, name and designation are there in the employee object. Yes. Okay. So you need to. Uh, 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 what I need is uh, I need output as uh, list of employees who are having uh, designation only manager. So it is having various designations like manager, team lead, uh, like the developer. Okay. Different designations are there. I need output uh, only list of employees who are having. Uh, designation as manager oh yes we can uh, mm, the, uh, we can get it through uh, uh, with the help of streams here like a uh, basically like a list of uh, like employee list dot stream of we need to apply the filter like filter of that object that arrow mark and then we need to write that our condition there like uh, employee object dot get get uh, designation equal signal case to manager then we need to collect the subject as a list like Collect dot collectors dot to list. Then we'll get the list of objects, like list of objects who are like who are empl- who are managers. Okay. What is the uh, argument type for the filter? Argument type in this uh, I didn't get. So uh, you said you are going to use uh, filter, right? Uh, yes. So filter, uh, you are passing a lambda to the filter, right? Mm. So what is the argument type of the filter? like it will be the normal employee class only that like what class we are uh, like list of classes we are iterating it that class object only will be passed as an argument to yeah but uh, see uh, every method has an argument type right if it has they are passing something to a method mm-hmm. uh, let's just, uh, for example take uh, equals method mm-hmm. you pass uh, something to the equals method the argument type is string right yeah oh, okay okay you uh, okay you are asking that way what is the argument type we pass to filter uh, yeah. i feel that uh, it should be uh, the generic type like it should handle any object that is coming input so i believe it should be a generic ob- generic like we impl- uh, designate it with t right like it, should, it it can replace with any object so that should be the argument type i feel Okay. Uh, what are the functional interfaces, uh, built-in functional interfaces we have in uh, Java 8? Functional interfaces? So basically, functional interfaces have internal, any, only one method. Uh, I would uh, say vulnerable interface. Uh, right, right now, I'm getting that one. We have only one method inside it, one method. Okay. So, what exactly is the functional interface? So, basically, any interface uh, which is having only one method inside it, we call it as a functional interface. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, have you seen uh, at functional interface annotation? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, if we want to create our own functional interface, we annotate the interface with a direct functional interface. and then we have the, the abstract method inside it 
So suppose if I remove the annotation at functional interface, on the interface, mm -hmm. so still it works as a functional interface or not? Mm. It's not heavy. Uh, uh, Have you written in your own functional interfaces? Uh, no, I haven't worked on functional interfaces itself. Like I know, like many interfaces which have one method is functional interface. Uh, basically, nothing will happen. But uh, I'm not sure whether that is called functional interface or not. Like any method. Yeah, I, I still feel it is a functional interface. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, in how many ways we can create an object? How many ways we can? Can create object. Uh, like uh, two ways basically. One is like uh, at the compilation time itself, like static uh, object creation, and one is dynamic object creation. If I'm not wrong, In the two ways we can create the object. Like using new keyword, we can create it. at the compilation time only. We know like what object is getting created on what it is referring to, and one is at the dynamic time. Like uh, if you go with the uh, dependence, uh, this one. What I can say. Dependency injection concept that that is dynamic uh, uh, object creation. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, I have a hash map called data. Oh, sorry, okay. hash map. I have a hash map called data. Hash map name is data. Okay. Okay. And uh, this hash map uh, types are uh, keys and pointer type and the value is the integer. Keys and now oh, can I note it on one minute? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Hash map keys employee object value is integer. Okay. Okay. So I am adding uh, key value pairs like this. Data dot put new employee of Kranti comma one. Okay. New employee of Kranti is a key. Hmm. I am passing the name to the employee in the constructor. Okay. New employee of name will be passing to with yeah. the okay okay. Scanty comma one. Again, uh, uh, I am adding like the like this five times. Same key value pair. Data dot put new employee of Scanty comma one. Data dot put new employee of Scanty comma one. Like that, I am adding five times. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, you are uh, adding five objects. Five key value. Oh, yeah. Five key value pair. Sorry. Yeah. Hmm. So a uh, same key value pair. I'm hmm. adding. So what is the size of the map? Oh, uh, like it, it. It depends upon the hash map here. Like how, like e sorry, hash map and equals method here. Like based on what you are saying, two objects are equal. So if at all the employee object is having only name and you are overriding the hash. Equals method in such a way that if two names are equal, then the object is equal. Then only one object will be present. So, but if at all uh, the employee object is having ID and name, and if you are uh, saying that based on the ID two objects are equal, then there will be five objects. Okay. Uh, so where did you put this all implementation? That Inside the employee class, we need to have this implementation. Okay. Can you elaborate it? Uh, how are you doing that? Uh, like inside the employee object, we need to override the equals method here. Mm -hmm. So in the equals method, uh, we'll pass on the object of the same object, and we'll have the compare method. Like if at all uh, e emp this dot uh, that object name dot get name equals same, then return uh, then equals it uh, then return zero, which means they are equal. So if at all I'm writing that logic, uh, that will that will work. Okay. Let's say uh, my hash code method is there, right? Uh, you told that you will have uh, a hash code and equals method. Mm -hmm. So uh, my hash code method is always returning the same value. Okay. Then what happens to this scenario? So when the hash code is, uh, method is returning the same value for different keys, then hash code is in occur. Uh, and everything will be stored in the same bucket. But uh, when we get try to get the object, uh, then the equals method comes into picture. Like, 
whether this object is uh, what we are getting is correct object or not okay okay um let's say i have an error list hmm? okay okay uh, i am uh, the error list name is the al al is my error list name okay so i am doing al dot null again al dot uh, add of null al dot add of null three times i am adding null okay the error list now what is the size of the uh, size of the error list it will be 3 Okay. Uh, you know has that right? Uh, it will uh, it will need to do with this. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me how it will uh, eliminate the do with this in the hash? So uh, internally again hash set uses uh, hash map only. So the value what we are uh, like whatever we are uh, adding it to the hash set again it will go as a key to the hash map. and the same operation what happens in the hash map like create generating the hash code uh, then identifying the index of the bucket where it goes and all those will all those things happen but uh, the value will be stored as a null so any time um, we are duplicating it the same hash code will be uh, again generated and the same key will be uh, like uh, try to insert there and if at all it is uh, if sees that equals method comes true then it will override that method like it, basically it will not allow to insert itself the second option mm-hmm. you have a multi threading experience oh yes i have can you tell me what is the difference between sleep and yield sleep and yield uh, Sleep. I know, like it will go into sleep for the designated amount of time. What we are sending, like in the milliseconds, yield. Oh, yield, yield. Uh, yeah. Uh, I yield is. Uh, uh, it uh, yield will make a thread to stop, and it will uh, uh, give the other thread of the same priority a chance to pro- process. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I feel that. Yield uh, to be honest, I am not uh, exactly getting the yield method, but uh, uh, long back I studied on this, uh, so uh, very vaguely I remember this. Okay. What is executor service? Executor service, uh, like uh, basically, uh, it is used to create the thread pools. For that, uh, whenever we want to create a thread pool uh, thing, uh, we will go with the executor service framework. Okay. What are wild cards in Genrix? Wild cards? In, I'm not sure on that. Wild cards in Genrix. Uh, not sure. Yes. Okay, no problem. So, uh, what is the advantage we will get from Genrix? So, like uh, we were discussing right now, like what is the parameter type of the filter method? Like because uh, of the Genrix, we are getting that benefit. Any object can go and sit there. If at all, we are defining it as a Genrix parameter type, so it can take any parameter and it it can perform the operation on it. any parameter and it can okay it can pass any values okay and uh, any other benefits we will get from genrix uh we don't need to explicitly type cast i feel uh, okay have you used genrix anywhere uh like uh, Uh, four, four, five years back, I have used in one of the project, uh, but later on, then again, I haven't used that one. Can you tell me how you will write the error list declaration, and how you declare an error list? Like array list of what type you want? Like if it is like a string, it is a string type. Uh, we will give string so in that. Earlier, we not used to write that, right? Ah, uh, yes. So what is that? Uh, now we are writing. What is the concept we are writing? Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, what is the concept behind it? Ah, uh, the concept is generics again. Like. Okay. 
validating something you know, like some mandatory field validation i am doing and that value is not present then i'll throw an explicitly some customized exception there mandatory field check field so for that purpose i'll be using throw keyword and the method which is calling this validate method uh, will get the exception and uh, if at all uh, i am no, uh, uh, there is a scenario where i am not handling uh, the exception and the method may raise an exception at that time i will indicate at the method level that whoever is using this method should uh, handle the exception and what exception that is getting thrown i'll i'll uh, mention it using throws that exception like if at all if it is an automatic like sql exception that method may throw if at all i'm performing any db operation and i am not handling it i'll mention it at at the method signature itself like throws sql exception and whoever is accessing this method should handle that exception in the try catch what is uh, an index out of bound exception are uh, index out of one uh, like a uh, uh, if there are uh, suppose there are five elements in uh, like five objects in another array and we are trying to access uh, a sixth or seventh uh, like six object uh, then we will get this array index out of bound exception like there is nothing present at that uh, index and we are trying to access that index at that time we will get that exception okay it is abstraction uh, abstraction uh, yeah. uh, it is like a uh, uh, hiding the complex uh, implementation to the end user like by just by exposing one method i'll i'll process the entire request but the logic uh, that is behind that happens like what happens to that request and what all things happen that i'll hide it that is known as abstraction Okay, what is the Spring version uh, we have used? Which version? Spring. I just four version. Okay. What are the models you work in Spring? Uh, work on Spring or you see uh, Spring JDBC. I uh, long back I was work on Spring AOP also. Okay. Have you used any ORM frameworks? Uh, we are using MyBatis to connect to DB. What is the? Okay, you are using MyBatis. Can you explain me what is dependency injection? Uh, so basically, dependency injection is uh, nothing but uh, we are uh, uh, giving the control like entire control will be taken by the spring container uh, like instead of we creating the objects and injecting it at the required uh, at, the, at the required position like uh, earlier we used to do like uh, we whenever we want to create an object we used to use new keyword now just with the uh, help of few annotations uh, uh, if we define if we configure our application properly then entire uh, thing of creating the object and injecting it, it at the required positions like the required classes will be taken care by spring so that uh, the, the entire process is not dependency injection like yeah. like basically if you go with the name also like injecting the dependencies at the required class or at the required position is known as dependency injection i would say what is the benefit uh, we will get from this so here uh, like uh, the uh, pro, uh, the what i can say like um, the entire process of creating initializing the beans and destroying the beans will be taken care by spring uh, that is the biggest advantage we get here okay spring is not there uh, what is the advantages we will have sorry if spring is not there at least right hmm so what is the disadvantages we will have so entire thing we need to handle it through the code like we need to write the code what needs to happen where 
like which injection which dependency should be mapped where so all those things used to be manually coded earlier okay so that manual coding thing can be removed now like what is the difference between a component annotation and a din annotation so a component can be used at a class level and it bean uh, will go with the method level so basically if you want to use that at the red bean uh, annotation or uh, that should be used inside the red configuration class like a class annotated with the red configuration inside that we we will use this uh, and uh, we for uh, the red component we don't need to specify any components can it will be, it will be directly handled with the spring container but here we uh, when we use the red bean uh, we need to tell bring explicitly that there is a bean inside this class and we need to give that package name in the component scan okay so uh we have uh, created any web services oh uh, yes which framework you use for it uh, uh jersey we have used okay i will give you one scenario hmm? I have a employee table is there, hmm? and in that uh, have a record uh, with uh, record is having employee ID and employee name. Okay. Okay. Uh, the name is uh, something is there, so you need to update the name to Kranti based on the ID employee ID. Okay. Employee ID is one two three. Based on uh, one two three, you will update the name with Kranti. Hmm. That is my requirement. Okay. So you need to hit the URL. The uh, URL will be like this: exposure. dot com slash hmm. employee slash one two three. One two three is an ID. Okay. And question mark name is equal to Kranti. Once you hit this URL, it will take the ID which is one two three, and update the name of that uh, rec- name of the record containing the ID one two three. Yeah. The name given name. Okay. Hmm. So, can you tell me how you are going to write a RESTful web service? I would like you to explain uh, class level and method level annotations that you are going to use. Yeah. I don't want any DAV logic. Yeah. So, okay. can you the, come from class uh, level? Yeah, at the controller class, uh, like basically, I will be writing uh, the REST controller at the class level, and the request mapping will be like employee. So, I'll create an uh, an employee controller here. So any request with imp- for on employee object should come here. So I will annotate uh, like I will annotate with the request mapping and I will specify the value employee there. And coming to the method level, I will give slash uh, what is ID right now? Uh, yeah, ID slash uh, like sla- uh, like slash ID and the query param there. Then I will in the method uh, I will be accessing this with the direct query param. I will access the One to the ID and with the path param, oh sorry, with the query param, I will be access, accessing the name, and with the path param, I will be getting the ID here. So once I get it, uh, I can go to the Debian and I'll update with the update query. Okay, what is the HTTP method we are going to use? Uh, put I'll go with put here. Okay, so how you do? How will you mention put here? Oh sorry, uh, we uh, we need to uh, mention everything at the method level here. What we consume, like uh, what are we consuming, what are we producing, and what would be the re- response body. And in the method signature only, we 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 will give like what is this HTTP method like whether it is a put so post. Are you are going to use that method level. For for what is the annotation? The red request uh, re- request uh, request mapping, and I'll give the slash. And inside that only, I'll be giving uh, method equal HTTP post. Okay. So uh, for this service, you are giving uh, put time post. Put time giving. Okay. So uh, once you're done with the service, what I did is uh, I removed the put and I I replaced it with post. Hmm. Will the service work? Ah, uh, even even then it will work. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you are going to use post. Uh, uh, I'll go with the post when I'm inserting it for the first time. Okay. Okay. What is the difference between controller and rest controller annotations? 
controller and rest uh, in the rest controller uh, we don't need to explicitly use at the rate response body like whatever the return type is there that will go as a response body but if you are using at the rate controller we need to specify that annotation and we need to explicitly say say this is a response type here what is the data type you are using in your project data type in the sense oh, i mean data format sorry a json we use json okay how uh, this uh, json is uh, converted into java object or vice versa uh, we need to have uh, uh, like we are having uh, dependency uh, the apache dependency i'm not getting the exact name. we need to have the dependency and we need to configure it uh, what is apache what is it? i'm not getting the exact name but uh, we need to have this uh, apache dependency i'm not get exactly getting the name okay. of the thing. no issues no issues ignore it uh, you have uh, any experience in queries or join uh, like basic queries i have experience but uh, i don't have experience uh, like in detail uh, uh, what experience in uh, store procedures oh no, no i don't have experience in store procedures Uh, design patterns. Ah, uh, design patterns. I know. What are the design patterns you are aware of? Ah, uh, singleton design pattern. We have ah, uh, like if we have I use my project. I we are explicitly using such ah, uh, like ah, uh, what abstract ah uh, factory method, factory design pattern and abstract factory design pattern. So these are few things which I know. Which version you are using? Ah, uh, it is one point eight. One point eight. Yes. One point eight. Some version, and there is one more number like I exactly don't remember. And in few components, we are using two phase version. Can you tell me what are the error codes you are aware of? Ah, uh, error code. Ah, uh, like five hundred is the internet service error. Five hundred three is the uh, service unavailable. 404 not phone 406 what is 406 406 uh, 406 uh, i am not getting right now okay okay so uh, while you are explaining about uh, where you maintain your property files when property file in this like we have we will have in the resource folder we will be having our property file Okay, you are using properties file. Mm hmm. Okay, so you have uh, you told that you are maintaining this module wise, right? How you are more maintaining this properties file? Uh, so uh, are we uh, so in the local testing purpose, we we will use our application dot yms and uh, so. and in, in the like in the environment so whether it is dev or any higher environment we use u deploy to configure our properties mm -hmm. so through the u deploy that gets configured okay so in your local you are using ml file uh, in the local sorry i can you repeat you are using ml file oh uh, yeah both ek okay. ml we are using in some components we are using properties file also not properties In ML files, how you are maintaining uh, properties for different environments? In the ML uh, file, different prop. I didn't get actually. Can you with uh, elaborate like? So um, in the ML files, you would mention this DB username, yes. password, hmm? driver name, right? Hmm? But uh, they will be having different, and yes. you will be having different, right? Hmm? Oh, how you are maintaining those? Oh, we we will have only one YAML file here. Ah, uh, the uh, like based on the environment in the U deploy. If I tell I ah uh, what I can say, ah uh, depends the code in dev. I will check it, check the dev properties and dev properties will get configured there. If at all I am going with higher environment properties, I need to check there like which on which environment ah uh, you want to uh, which environment properties you want to configure there. Okay, so. This is not a complete microservice architecture. Right? Yes. You have any microservices? Hmm. Okay. 
ఓకే క్రాంతి డన్ విత్ ద ఇంటర్వ్యూ ఐ విల్ షేర్ ద ఫీడ్బ్యాక్ విత్ ద హెడ్ ఓకే థాంక్యూ ఫర్ యువర్ టైం థాంక్యూ ఫర్ యువర్ టైం